it's funny how initially I used to think that ah mm. why would someone go on the internet and, and be watching um sexual activity like it was it used to be very but way from yeah. I'm like ah it's not possible I can never and you'll be shocked that years later I found myself doing the same thing that, that I was thinking about like ah, why would someone ever do this and it's 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 it, it has taught me a lot of lessons mm. so it's to in uh, first of all not to even judge when yeah. you hear people that are struggling with such addiction because you'll be sure you will even do worse yes and like you will yes. do worse than them and i i at a point i had to talk about it i had to um, open up and maybe i have not fully opened up about how deep it is but i had to open up to certain people then i noticed that people oh, in the church this is very cool. in the church no Okay. In the church, no. People I, I you rather, knew who could help you. Yes. People in the ministry, yes. Okay. But in the church, it's, it's very, it's, it's very difficult to open up all these things in the church yeah. because you will be pointed fingers at, and and it's even more serious when everyone sees you as, hey, this the sister or just your. <laughs> Thema's finest. Oh, right there. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Mental Health Quarters. Today the quarters is full because we have a wonderful guest who also happens to be my friend and mental health advocate. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, like this video because it's so going to be worth it. So let's get started. Can you tell me your name? your background your hobbies anything you'd like to share because i know you somehow but my guests don't know you and we met for the first time last week i think i've known you for like two years or something yes we've been internet friends internet friends we, yes, we met yes. yes so the first time we, we, she contacted me was I used to save your name as Adole hyphen Facebook <laughs> so that I'll not forget how we met and all that and after that she has been a good friend to me since so meeting her for the first time in person like we had a long conversation we spoke yeah, for hours yeah. yes so I was so happy when she said she's coming on the channel because it's it's a huge honor and a privilege to me to get people like her to come on here so your name again Hi everyone, my name is Adele Bachman and I'm a mental health advocate. I'm also a writer and I'm a teaching assistant and I'm happy to be here to have this conversation. So am I. So, um, Adele, do you have a favorite color? My favorite color? I don't really have a favorite color, but black brings out my beauty. So, so Adele, some people say you are gorgeous. <laughs> so if you are watching this video, this is just yes. <laughs> no, I don't like to use my face. So yes. I like my middle name. Okay, so na adole. Na adole. Okay, so what can Christians who struggle with addiction do to overcome it? Because it can be overcome, right? It's not something you have to do with forever. And let's just get this straight. Addiction can take any form. Someone can be addicted to food. You see, sometimes when we say addictions, we think of only the serious ones, like oh, someone is addicted to uh, smoking, mm -hmm. fornication, adultery, and then what? Yeah. Alcohol. Yes. We think. We have sexual addiction. Yes. We have different types of addiction. Sometimes addiction to your phone, mm -hmm. addiction to. You can even be addicted to people right maybe someone is toxic but that's the very person you are drawn to like <laughs> of all the the people who are not toxic you are just drawn to that's why sometimes someone can tell you all the people have dated they are like this there's a particular there's a pattern trend. yes there's a trend that is going on so you can even be addicted 
with people and it can be very dangerous for you as an individual if you are toxic. So what can people do to overcome addiction or what did you do to overcome your addiction? So it's, it's not just going to be a particular thing that you do, it's going to be a process. You are going to find yourself in different stages where you, you succeed and then later you find yourself going back to it and then you find yourself up again. So it's, it's going to be a process from okay. healing. And I'm, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it is going to be easy. It's really not. <laughs> Because you, you are going to find yourself in different stages where you would think that uh, am I even trying to overcome this thing yeah. at all? And and the sad thing is that before you realize that okay you are trying to overcome this other addiction, there is another addiction that you start to Develop. also identify that as so you still have this you have that you have that. So before I even begin, I want to just say that you in that stage of trying to overcome an addiction you have to really be um, a bit soft on yourself don't be too hard on yourself don't give yourself like a particular timeline and say okay by, by next year. week <laughs> i want to stop my alcoholic addiction or by the end of um, next month even though it's good to give yourself those things but it, in a way it can lead you into even falling back into it much more deeper, deeper and stronger and one of the ways to actually overcome is, is is to talk about it because i noticed that when i i came out or i started to talk about some of the things i was really struggling with it's it, it it gave me a sort of it gave me a sense of um, agency that okay i think this thing i need to solve it because i'm talking about it and and the more you talk about something the more it actually helps you yeah. to heal from it but of course, you have to be very discerning on who you are you talk with. about it. You, you don't want to go find, viral. Yeah, you have to um, find people that really you trust. are comfortable with, people that would open up to your struggles, people that accept you for who you are. Mm-hmm. Then you can talk about it. And and the, the next thing is that um, as as Christians, the Holy Spirit is our helper, yeah. and and the Holy Spirit has been given to us. To help us, he says that he helps us in our iniquities. The scripture says that in Romans, mm. and and it's, it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Romans chapter eight it says that likewise the Spirit also helped our infirmities. For he, he knows we know not what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And this was one of the scriptures like I stood by throughout some of my wildest and deepest forms of addiction i always go back to the holy spirit like holy spirit please i need your help be- be- because it gets to a point you really can't do anything about it yeah. and it can even it's get like to a point bound. yes and i can get to a point where the people you are even talking about you you you, you can see that they have given all, all their help <laughs> but still. and you are still finding yourself struggling with this and it it's it, it, is when like it's at that point that you realize that okay the Holy Spirit really cares for us and he wants to see us better. It sounds very cliche a lot of time when we say that oh the, the Holy Spirit helps us but you will be shocked to know like yeah, how Jesus. much he's really there for us. I remember th- there was a day I was supposed to go for a program. It was a half night and I don't know I, I got so depressed that day. I, I can't remember exactly what made me sad but I was just like I'm not even going to church because of some some of the things that I thought that I had done and maybe God was yeah. upset about it. So I, I was just lying in my bed and I was using my phone for inappropriate things. I went out to, to get some alcohol in bed with and I just wanted to wow away every sort like I just wanted to empty my mind. And I was supposed to be in church that day, mm. but I didn't go. And like this it, it was in that moment that you will be sure that in some of these moments is even when God is closest to us. Yeah. It's in this moment that the Holy Spirit is even there for us and He wants to really help us. He actually wants to help us. Sometimes we just don't give him the chance. And a lot of um there, there are a lot of myths about 
the Holy Spirit being away from us when we do something. Yeah, but it's some it's, scriptures it's, that people read and misinterpret. Yeah, it's not really so actually. It's in some of our weakest and loneliest and deepest moments of addiction that he's there and he wants to help us. I've had so many encounters about God. I, I may not necessarily hear God, but maybe I'll sleep after after watching pornography or drinking some low percentage of alcohol and i'll have this dream and i, I will know that okay god is trying to, to reach out come close. so one of our help like one of the ways you can overcome addiction the first one is to talk about it and also to embrace the fact that the holy spirit wants to help us he wants to help us. i think people should stop preaching like the holy spirit is angry with us or we grieve him so he's going away yeah. but really he wants to help he wants yeah. to come close he's there in our deepest form he's there when we are watching the pornography he's there when you are masturbating he's there when you're having sex when you know you're not supposed to so in that moment you ask for help yeah. you ask for help yeah. i'm really glad you talked about the holy spirit you know in the old testament the holy spirit used to come and go Mm-hmm. That's why David was saying, like, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. But now, New Testament, modern day Christians think that the Holy Spirit still comes and goes. So when you are addicted, when you do something which is addictive or you sin against Him, He's mad at you and then He goes. But He's actually closest to you. Very cool. Yeah, when you are even doing the bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's there, he's watching everything, but it doesn't mean he doesn't care about you. It reminds me of the story of the prodigal son upon all the things he did. You know, when he came back to his father's house, I think it's the father who ran yes, first. The, the father saw him from a Papa, And he ran and met him. So yeah. that's how God has always been. He will leave the 99 and come mm-hmm. to the one who left. But please don't always be the one. <laughs> so, is there any relation between addictions and mental health? Because what we've been talking about, some people may think it only affects your spirit, mm-hmm. but there's some a little bit of mental health involved. That's why sometimes people are so addicted that they have to go go to rehab. Mm-hmm. They have to be detoxified. They have to mm-hmm. be. Sometimes people even have to travel. Away, yeah, from their, away from their yes from the triggers the stresses the addictions sometimes even people have to cut people off yeah. sometimes people have to block some numbers <laughs> 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 block some numbers and all these things so do you think there's any relation there there is a big 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 relationship be- between um, addictions and mental health so i'm going to to center it on um, addictions related to pornography, the sexual lust addiction, you will notice that it will begin to, to affect your social life. Okay. It will begin to affect your normal relationships, not just love relationships, friendships, people that are even older than you. It, it will begin to, to make you more into yourself. So okay. I'm going to use myself as an example. When I started to find um, some sort of comfort from my phone and being addicted to the internet and doing all things. I noticed that I, I didn't want to really associate myself with people. I would always prefer to be alone. I always prefer to um, be in my in the room corner, corner. Yeah, somewhere that no one will even see. And it really destroyed a lot of my friendships. It really destroyed a lot of my social interactions and associations because I, I I began to see people as a disturbance. Like I wouldn't <laughs> you want, the want phone. to yes, I would rather want to just be on my own. And it's it's a very dangerous thing. In that way it is really affecting your mental health because you start to be more depressed and you start to be more anxious about yourself. You begin to be more lonely. And it would really affect your self-esteem. Yeah. Because now you feel like I don't even really have anybody. I just want to be with my phone. Yeah. So I'm not that important. Nobody really loves me. 
I, I think I would want to be alone. I don't want to be um, even be in a relationship and all that. So it has a, it, it, it can take a huge toll on your mental health. Yeah. And it's very unconscious. Like you may not realize it immediately. But so that's, as, as that's you time get deeper so. into it, you notice that, wow, I, I, now I don't even <laughs> want to really have a lot of friends and all that. And if you are not careful, if you are looking forward to marriage, it can really affect who you want to be. Yeah. So, yes, addictions have a very, um, is it has a relationship yeah. with your mental health. And it can also affect your physical health. There are some people yeah. that have, they are recovered addicts, but whatever they did when they used to be addicted, yeah. it has taken a huge toll on their yeah. physical health. There are people who are, no longer smokers but what they did many years ago has now affected their lungs there are people who are also they were addicted to pornography now mm. they are serious reasons they are married but even though they have a spouse it still doesn't cure that addiction that is there and that's why when you're addicted you need to seek for help as mm. soon as possible i think me too i have a small addiction mm. sometimes when I do that addiction, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it makes me feel so guilty that yeah. I don't want to have anything to do with God. Like it's like yeah. I'm hiding. Like God can see me, but I'm trying to hide. And, and, and the that. enemy would capitalize on yes. that and make you feel even more like God doesn't want to get good yes. anymore. Yes. So you just keep doing what you are doing. Yes. You are yes. just going to die out of it. Yes. And when I used to do that particular addiction. Mm. It was really terrible. Like my relationship with God became very awkward. Like he didn't have a problem with me. Are but you? I kept on making it look like God, I know you don't want to talk to me. Exactly. So you know I'm not one of your favorites. Yes, children. you just protect me, give me wisdom to go and write this paper. We'll talk about what I did later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about what I did later when I'm ready, you know. I know you forgive me, but <laughs> I just want to and you know sometimes when you are even going to do that addiction, you can literally hear a voice will tell you, don't do this. But mm. I used to have this way of switching off that voice. Mm. It's like addiction mode activated. <laughs> <laughs> addiction mode activated. It's silence the voice of God. Because you know God will be telling you, don't do this, don't do that. Like, please. Don't. And it's not like a... A, a loud no, voice. You know, the devil is telling you to do something. It's like, do this, do this, do this. But God is very gentle mm. don't do this don't do this. god has a different way of talking to everybody but me i think that's my own like you just hear this peace and stillness like please don't do this but mm. some of us we just switch it off addiction mode activated when we finish we do addiction mode deactivated <laughs> <laughs> deactivated now you can talk to me but i'm not listening <laughs> yes and so if you're a christian and you're out there and you're struggling with addiction don't think you're the only one it will surprise you what people are struggling with what they are dealing with and what mm -hmm. after doing all that sometimes they have to come to church and pretend like everything is okay but they are really really struggling with a lot mm -hmm. so please make sure that you seek professional help maybe through a therapist a psychologist seek the help of god you seek the help of someone you can trust and don't sit down and suffer in silence and think there are people i know who have prayed for years about a particular addiction in fact it's like the more they pray about it mm -hmm. the more the addiction <laughs> gets worse but i can assure you that someone told me this thing that sometimes before something actually goes away it becomes back stronger it's it, yes sometimes it comes back stronger or it wants to fight its last fight with you before it will leave you but then after some years it just stops and goes so please make sure you seek professional help seek the help of god and god will never let you die any final words for our viewers because some people i know some people are out there they may not watch this video now they may come and watch it in some years to come at that time maybe cry by now you'll be an international hey, speaker <laughs> and they may need some sort of hope inspiration encouragement because there are some people that it's like now they just have accepted that this addiction is living with them forever maybe it's even a family addiction maybe you saw your father do it or your mother do it mm -hmm. or you saw your friends do it 
or maybe the same the very addiction that you judge someone about like in mm. your case me i also did some <laughs> i also judged some people about a particular addiction and i don't even know how i got there so what can you do to encourage yourself so friends of i mean all, what can they do okay. i mean just give them some ways of encouragement so in first of all you are not the only one struggling with this or you are not the only one struggling with that particular addiction i think it's, it's, it's one of the things the devil keep lying to us as christians the devil will tell you that see you are the only one struggling with this thing you are the only one going to suffer and you're the only one that has maybe gone this deep into this but it's, it's a lie like it's a big big lie and unfortunately whenever christians specifically when we hear such words in our heart we, it rather makes us curl into into that shell of addiction but really come out and talk about it even even if you are still struggling with it you have not really found a, a solution to your addiction you will be surprised that it's likely that you have gotten to the level where at least you are healing someone yeah. is not even has not been able to to even make an effort to heal at all but you are, are getting somewhere and like i said don't be hard on yourself don't be hard on yourself also doesn't mean that you don't always have to go back to it and then um, it, it rather becomes harder for you yeah. but don't be too hard on yourself don't be too hard on yourself accept that yes this thing is a struggle for me this thing is 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 really eating me up i'm struggling to stop this but in as much as you are struggling to stop it don't be so hard on yourself about it take one step at a time if you have to go for therapy please do if you have to seek um, a, a professional advice if you have to seek a pastoral advice please do and make sure that you are also making an effort to cut off the, the things that um, um, is making you addicted so there are sometimes i'll just go off social media because i know that i'll go on social media i'll go on youtube and go and see a video and it will take me back to a pornography site yeah. so try to make an effort try to at least you are helping yourself out of it even if you fall back into it get up again rise again there is always another day there is always another hope for you and 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 i also want to um send out a lot of love and prayers to those that are struggling yeah. with addictions and maybe you have not yet struggled with it it's possible that you will think that whole oh, media are not get any <coughs> addictions in jesus name yes, yes. we all said <laughs> that but you will be sure that some way somehow some addiction is waiting for you somewhere yeah. and this is the time to also pray into it pray that you don't fall into certain temptations Pray that the Lord will give you um, good friendships that, that will sustain your Christian life. Pray that you you will not fall prey to the enemy's devices and the yeah. enemy's schemes. Yeah. And most importantly, your addiction is not you. Yes. You are still a child of God. As, as cliche as it sounds, God still loves you. The Holy Spirit is still your helper. He's still your comforter all of us he's still the one that is abiding with us and even if you are struggling in addiction still believe that god is with you still believe that the holy spirit is going to help you and is helping you and try to block all the enemy's lies from your head that you will not you will never come out yeah. of alcoholism you will never, never come out free. of sexual lust you can and you will we are all in this together we are all fighting this christian work the christian work is not easy yeah it's so difficult it's full of a lot of distractions yes. especially in this 21st century it's worse so i i really want you to accept it accept your vulnerability accept your weakness accept your addiction and ask for help ask human beings for help ask god for help try to make the effort and gradually we shall all overcome I'm glad you said that. And when Adole says accept your addiction, she does not mean accept that it is there with you forever. Accept that it is a problem mm -hmm. which you need to deal with, get rid of. Accept that you can overcome it. Accept that God is there to help you through it also. Accept that you can be free. It's like acceptance 
it helps it, a it lot really helps. with yeah. healing, even it in my own healing. mental health journey. Mm. When I decided to accept that there's a problem mm. and I need to take medication for it, I need to do therapy, I need to go for a review appointment, I need to accept that I'm not like everybody else now. It's really made a difference in my healing. And so, Adole, I thank you so much for coming to the mental health mm. quarters. We hope this is not your first and last. Oh, I'll be coming more uh, and more and more. This video <laughs> is evidence that she says she will come more and more. So what are you waiting for? Please make sure that you subscribe, you like, you share. Share to all your WhatsApp groups, share to all your pages. Everybody. Like, feel free to share. I've, I've realized that, look, sometimes you never know how a video is going to help someone yeah, yeah. sometimes people are dealing with stuff they never talk about it but mm -hmm. they will hear something and i hope that anyone who is addicted will be really set free from their addiction mm -hmm. i always say you have to combine your faith with the physical so mm -hmm. whatever you are doing spiritually to get rid of your addiction make sure that you are also doing um, the physical ones like mm -hmm. the therapy and all that and you will be free there are people who have shared testimonies of their freedom from addiction and i even know a stripper i follow her on youtube maybe i'll put a link here she's now married serious christian and she's encouraging other people who are addicted to the porn industry and all that to be set free from this addiction so we are not alone one day me too i will share my addiction story <laughs> thank you so much Adele, thank for you. opening up your soul and telling us your story and your journey and what we can do to be set free. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Make Thank sure you come back. I will. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank it's you. bye from us at the Mental bye. Health Courses. Bye.